Welcome to WP Tonic, episode 13, The Day After Halloween. This is Bill Conrad with Jonathan Denwood, and today we're talking about local meetup, WordCamp San Francisco, and today's main theme is on WordPress security. So without further ado, let's get right into the show, especially without me singing. Jonathan, I am sure you're ready to start with the show. We're welcome to WP Tonic. We're back. Uh, this is episode 13, isn't it? It surely is, Bill, and it feels like it. And we're all caught up with all our shows are up online. This is on 1 November. We're going to actually put this up later today. Well, well, we hope so, Bill. Right now on the 1st and the 15th of each month is the goal to hit the show up. So yes, for, yes, Bill. And our numbers yes. are doubling. They I, are. You know why? Because I sang on the last episode, number 12, on the intro. I think you were on something, Bill. That's what I think. It was too you, late you, at night. Of course, you've got to deny that, haven't you? <laughs> so let's drive on. Right. So a lot has happened. We're going to be talking today about uh, the local schedule and meetings, what's going on this month. We're going to talk about WordCamp San Francisco. And of course, we're going to get to our topic, which is going to be all about security uh, for WordPress. So reference the schedule. We've got two things happening. Today's 1 November. On 3 November, you're going to be the guest host at the Reno Masterminds at Swill. And that's Will Coffee and Wine in Reno, Nevada. And that's on the 3rd at 5.30. Yep, I look forward to it. So who, what are you going to talk about there? I think I'm going to talk about WordPress and business because of the, the group that I'll be talking to about how I feel with the latest developments over the past year in WordPress that if you're looking to build a business, um, sell products, um, sell um, your experience through, you know, uh, sell anything, basically, um, PDFs, audio, training materials. That's what I was looking for, training materials. It, it's, you know, it's it's got fantastic plugins, you know, whatever you want to do, I feel WordPress is the way to go. Okay, that's good. And also, notice that you have your Blue Yeti working today. I do. I would like yeah. you to turn your gain down just a dab so oh, people can see if you're listening to it and suggest the sound. Not much. Keep on talking, though. Hello there, Bill. See, that's perfect. So we're getting Jonathan is the WordPress guru. I am the uh, sound guru. That's one, way, that's one way of putting it. Or it could be the sound Nazi. No, I won't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> we want good sound. We're always working at having good sound. And I won't go into detail, but mechanically, we're doing some different things today. Okay, so we've got then on the 6th, we have the WordPress meetup at the Reno Collective. Really easy to find on 100 Arlington, right across from the river downtown. Your favorite favorite place? Certainly is. It's a nice place. I like it. I used to be full-time there. I'm just using it part-time right now as a need, as we need. I used to do my interviews down in the Reno Collective, which I miss it. But right now, we're going to be working more out of my office and doing more Skype and this type of interview and technical work. So driving on, where are we? Okay, so we're going to talk about WordCamp. You went to WordCamp this month. Yes, I went to WordCamp San Francisco 2014. That's one of the big ones too, isn't it? It's the biggie. It's the biggie. And uh, Matt, Matt was speaking. Unfortunately, um, it's my first one, and it was the right decision because it's going to be the last one. Um, they're they're going to next year. They're going to do a WordCamp USA, and it will not be um, it will not be held in San Francisco. It will be held somewhere else. So, for our listeners, explain about WordCamp exactly. What is WordCamp? Where can you find it? How can I go to one? And there's apparently the big one. This is the big one, San Francisco. Yes, yeah, because it's run by Matt and Automatic directly. They well, Matt direct- Matt runs this one. Yeah, he has um, a sizable element in it, and and his um, team at Automatic have a strong um, input, and they directly run it. Um, I I actually think they probably will. Uh, I'm not sure next year because that might be a bit confusing, but maybe the year after. I'm sure San, the beat up group in San Francisco will probably run one. Um, there'll probably be a year's gap, um, and I'm only surmising that. Um, there will not be one in San Francisco next year run by Matt and Automatic. It will be somewhere else in North America. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about, first of all, there's WordPress uh, WordCamps all over the United States. Yes, They have yes. one in New York. Yeah. All your big cities have them. 
Yes. Reno yes. One, Reno. Yeah, we, um, you know, that's one of the reasons, one of the reasons why I've been running, taking over and with Matt Fitzgerald's help, I've been running it because um, it stopped running the meetup group, meetup group for about four months. And I think it's, does provide great value to the community and it has great benefit to the WordPress tribe. Yeah. For our listeners, explain, uh, you're talking about Matt. Matt, where's Matt's business located? In uh, San Francisco, Automatic Software is Automatic is the private um, WordPress dot org is a non profit organization. WordPress dot com is directly run by Automatic, and Automatic is a privately held company. Yep. And Matt is what is the CEO of Automatic, and. Um, him and his automatic team have a high level of control. It's still volunteer base, but um, automatic um, help out, and so does Matt with the running of the main meet. Um, so, how many people were there in San Francisco? About a thousand. That's huge, and it's going to move somewhere else next year. Are you in Las Vegas? Or how about Reno? Uh, I don't think it'd be. We, Reno. we could do it, Reno. We have a lot of big facilities here that could be used in hotels if you do. Uh, you do it right now, this time of year. Okay, Matt, I know you're listening out there. <laughs> Don't think he is. I know he's listening. No, he's going to listen to this. He's going to get the word. I know he's going to listen to this. Okay, Matt, here's a, Reno is a great place this time of year to have your USA, WordCamp USA meetup because rooms are inexpensive. It's not ski season. It's not summertime. We don't have any of the big events going. Right now is the time to have, have the meetup here in Reno. And it's only a few hours drive from San Francisco. Yet you can fly in from all over the world. All over the world, we have a, a good size airport, and there's a lot of beautiful sightseeing if you come up here the Friday before. So that's my plug to have the big conference here. The other place is, is Las Vegas, but I think you do better here than even Las Vegas, especially this time of year. Actually, you're you're absolutely correct, Bill. Um, and Matt, put- Matt's going to listen. Right, I saw right. our numbers. Our numbers are getting huge. They're getting better, Bill. They're getting huge. No, they are. They're getting. I bet this one will, will double too. We're going to be up around a thousand downloads an episode. I bet within this month. That's fantastic. I don't want to bet too much, but I know we're doing well. We're doubling constantly. All right. So driving on, there's a lot we could talk about uh, Word WordCamp and meetups, and maybe we could even uh, did anyone talk about podcasting at all? Not really. No, they didn't. It was it's a highly developed focus. Um, they they have design and development. I spent most of my time in the development hall. They split it into two halls. It, it was held at the um, University of California. Yep, good place. Uh, they got some nice. They got a nice facility there, and the the catering I thought was really good. But Matt said it could be a lot better. Um, and, um, it was interesting. They had some. It was technical though. Um, the development talks were were not too technical but you you did have to have a knowledge of wordpress to get anything from it yeah hey i'm going to give a plug for the atlantis because atlantis has really improved their technology i i work around reno and i'm doing these google hangouts live in at some of the luncheons and they're they're doing really well at the atlantis with assistance and processes and upgrades so i'm going to even give a plug in for the atlantis which is right across from the convention center yeah, that's great. So that's my uh, plug for WordPress USA. Yeah, and um, use truly. Matt did a presentation about what were going to be in some of the leading developments for WordPress in 2015. And afterwards, he had a session where you could ask questions, and I asked him a question. I asked the great Matt a question, Bill. Too, as I'm going to give a quick plug for my product right now. We've got you're working on MailRite, which we're, it's coming along. I'm working on a combination of a, just a real quick Genesis product to pop up a simple podcast to get people going on WordPress for podcast. I don't want anyone to ever have to go through what I went through, learning both how to podcast and in getting WordPress up. I want to make it real simple, real fast. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, Bill. I That's think- why I'm always messing around with better systems and uh, simpler systems. You know, the simple system is the USB mic, which is like your Blue Yeti you have now hooked into your MacBook Pro, which works fine. But uh, the next level is, is what I call a Pro level, which I'm doing right now. 
Okay. And that's using the mixers and tying everything together. Right. So anyway, it's good. That's WordPress. We'll have to talk more about the, the word. We'll talk about the camps more. But let's get into the uh, meat of the show, which is security. We've got 19 minutes to tell us all about security. So you right. have some really good notes. And I did a little bit of research, too, on security. So where do you want to start? Well, I want to start, um, it, it's going to get increasingly more important to be serious about security. Um, I, I've come across a lot of WordPress owners that haven't maintained the core or any of the plugins, and they've got away with it. I think those days are dying rapidly. But the good news is WordPress is just expanding enormously. About 80 million websites now are run on WordPress. And that figure, um, by what Matt was saying, will only escalate uh, tremendously in 2015. With the internization of WordPress, they're getting very serious about language packs. Only 5% of the world population speaks English, but WordPress um, uh, and the core developers and Matt himself are determined to make um, WordPress uh, as easy to utilize as, in as many languages as possible. So the growth is only going to accelerate. Unfortunately, that has consequences because just like Microsoft, Microsoft itself is not inherently unsecure. But what's happened is, because most of the world, I'm a Mac person, but most of the world does use Microsoft. And because of that, it has become a target for every every hacker, every script kitty in the world. This is Bill. I'm going to break in. If you're like me and don't know what script kitty means, script kitty is a unskilled individual who uses script or programs developed by others to attack computer systems and networks and to face websites. So there you go. Now you know the meaning of script kitty. And the same thing is going to happen to WordPress because WordPress is going to have a dominant control over the website development. Most of your malicious code attacks and your kids scrippies are going to aim their attention at wordpress you know halloween is over halloween was last night you're scaring me sorry you're scaring me halloween was last night yes so um security is important so um basically a uh, number one how do you make your wordpress website more secure and there has to be a balance here you know, um, what you're trying to do basically is make it as secure as possible, but also you, you as usable as possible. It, you could try and make your WordPress website as secure as Fault Knox, but there isn't. But there would be an enormous price to pay for that. In basically, it would become difficult to maintain the site, to post new content on the site. It would become rather frustrating if you tried to make it totally. 99% secure because the reality is you can't make any website totally secure that's publicly facing. So there's a balance between uh, making it as secure as possible and still usable and enjoyable to use. So there's a balance. Um, so you've got to keep that in mind. So there's four steps that I've written that I fundamentally um, utilize on my own websites and definitely with clients' websites. Unfortunately, um, unless you're actively managing the site, you're normally called in when a site has been hacked. Um, and I'm going to go through that in a minute. Um, but to start off with, you need a good... What? we got to go through the four steps. Yes, we're going to go through the four steps. The number one is that you need a good hosting provider um basically you need a good lookout it's a bit like hey you know it's a bit like the romans when they built hadrian's wall in northern england <laughs> and along along that wall they all had lookouts and they were looking out for the the barbaric scottish God. scottish pit tribes that would raid the north of roman territory so that's what your hosting provider should be it should be an active lookout. When it sees that your site is bombarded with attempts to get into the login page, um, which it should be um, observing, it should lock down those sites automatically for you and then contact you and say, there's strange, there's strange activity going on here. And this is why you don't want to go with cheap, nasty hosting. 
because they can't afford to be your lookout. Cheap, every... nasty hosting. Yes. We won't che- mention any names. No, but you do, um, not always, but you do get what you pay for. It, you know, we've we've covered hosting extensively right. in our last podcast about speed. Right. And, and you know, you're using right now, which you got an affiliate on your link? Which we will, we will have a fear. I utilize this company myself. I will only affiliate products what? that we actively use ourselves. So what's the name? The site ground. So, and it's very good. I've watched Jonathan really transition to this new host, and it's very impressive. Your your speed is. I mean, I, I'm really impressed with some of the sites improvements. Yeah. And I yeah. use Blue, I use Bluehost Pro still, which is a very good package for what I do. Yes. Right now, for right now. Yeah, but um, my um, my friends at Site Ground, um, not only they provide good value um, on the higher packages. They provide superb email support. Right, right. It's the best that I've come across. I would personally say it's better than WP Engine. Right, right. And I'm I'm real happy with Bluehost and we got the affiliate Bluehost on my site and we'll have that affiliate we'll have the affiliates on both our sites. So Yeah. So that's step one. Um have good hosting. They are your lookouts on the watchtowers and um they when they see unusual activity they should contact you and be proactive number two um it's really necessary when in any security to have really good backups of your website not only of the database but all the physical files of the website and um you a lot of people say to me well my hosting provider um does backup um that is true, and if you've got a good hosting provider, they will have good backups, but they should be only your last resort, and I mean your last right. resort. They could have their servers could have been attacked, and they might have lost most of their backups. And I'm I'm going to destroy this gentleman's name. He's South African, Eddie. Nera, who's one of the founders of Wufu Themes, um, he did a talk and he described that he almost, him and his partners almost lost their whole business because they they got attacked, or the hosting provider servers got attacked, and they didn't have any workable backup, and almost all the hosting providers' backups had all been corrupted, and they were just lucky that they had a old uh, a backup that was on a hard disk that physically been disconnected from the server network and it was six months old and they just happened to have that and they could restore their business. But he said if that hadn't happened, it, we probably wouldn't be seeing Wufu themes at the present moment. So I think that that was quite a... That's a good I, story. I've got a story too. Go a 70-year-old gentleman, I'm not going to mention his name, who's a Hollywood trainer who had some very famous celebrities he was training. He started blogging. He blogged over a long period of time. He started blogging 15 years ago. But he really just did it without evolving and learning more about his blog. And he got he got attacked with a devil sign. So it comes up on his website, the devil. And he lost everything. No backup. No, it's just he, crazy. He, I mean, he had a another web page where he was selling product, but he lost his blog. And that was a huge blog. It's so sad, really, isn't it? All he sad, needed was a backup to recover that. It's a sad story. But um, the truth is there probably are copies of that. There's archive sites that index all the internet. Right. And there probably is ways of recovering that data. Yeah, he just doesn't even want to go after it now, but he just lost his entire blog with that. Yeah. So backup is really important when it comes to security. Having uh, having a, your own backup system where, and we've gone through there, there's a number of really good um, backup plugins and services out there that will do effective backups of right. your database and all your physical files of your site. So you must get that sorted out. And we've had we've had special special courses. We, one of our episodes was on backups. One of our it early was, episodes. So yeah, you can we go have, back. Yeah, we have spoken about backup a lot. Uh, yeah, and we'll have uh, some updates down the road on backup too, because I'm now using the Genesis framework, of course, with Dynamic for the podcasting model. I'm I'm giving out to my the students, and it's got an automatic backup in it that you can back up before you do anything. Yeah, do do make sure that it's not just the database though, yep. but that it's that it's, back, it's backing up all the important the theme. Or yeah, the, we, we have a child 
child name over. Yeah, make sure it's backing up everything, not just the database. So now, driving on backups important. That's that's where you start because if you do get attacked, you can always recover, right? Exactly. And then um, three point three is slightly controversial, um, and it doesn't directly make your site take secure, but it does make your site. Um, it's making your whole site secure socket layered. If you observe all the major websites now, like Twitter, the other ones are escaping me, but uh, if you look at all the big websites like Yahoo, Twitter, all everything is under secured socket layer. Um, that's that green icon in your taskbar of your browser. And um, thinking about a year's time, that almost um, a lot of hosting providers are going to insist that your whole site is under a secure socket certificate. And they used to be really expensive, but they're, they've gone down in price. And about six to eight months ago, most hosting providers, they introduced new technology that are now allows a, um, a certificate to cover all your sites under a particular domain name. You would have your top tier domain name and you would have sub domains and one certificate will cover everything right it used to be that the dom- you had to get a certificate for every domain but now with this new technology that runs on linux servers and most hosting providers are running on linux servers right uh, this will work um you used to also have to have a fixed ip address um, you don't actually need that now. So you're, if you're having problems with your hosting provider where, where there's insisting that you have a fixed IP address for your secure socket layer, um, it might be time to move on to another hosting provider. You know, I just went through this with some of our sites. I have the secure site on the nonprofit. And then on my site, we're not secure yet, but Bluehost will give me one free secure site. It does vary, but I don't think that's the best deal. And then I bought my security site from I, I my domains reside on on GoDaddy, and then Bluehost is where I do my hosting. So it's kind yeah. of strange. It's a little bit interesting. So why why am I suggesting this? Well, basically, the actual getting the secure socket layer proves to everybody that you're a real business, that you're a real entity, that you have to give information. So when people, you know, if you do get hacked, their reaction to what has happened won't be so severe, that you won't be straight away black labelled, because they can see that, yes, it's probably your site has been attacked, but you are a legitimate business because you have a secure socket layer and you've had to go through that process to prove who you are. So no real hardcore hacker that's setting up temporary websites to attack other websites is going to go through this process because the last thing they want is to be found out what they're doing. So um, they 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 and also you don't actually have to buy the actual certificate from your hosting provider. Most, you know, they they will encourage you, but you can actually buy the certificate from a third party and then either install it yourself, which is technical but not that hard, or your hosting provider should be prepared right. to install that at a realistic price. If they if they want to charge you something ridiculous again, it might be time to look at a different hosting provider. Um, I a really good uh, provider of really effective but very cheap secure certificate certificates is a company called Name Cheap, and you can get a, a perfectly functioning certificate from them for nine dollars a year. And uh, I wouldn't use them for hosting or domain name parking. I don't think they're that they've got reputation of not being a fantastic company for that. It would do a whole show because there's so much to it because I'm going through that right now. Now, I do have a lot of friends who don't have their their primary marketing sites SSL, but what they do have is they've got their their training sites, the sites you you buy or pay into for training yes. yeah. on SSL. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going to keep my 
my timelines of success. Yeah. I think eventually I want to go timelines of success SSL because they even say it enhances the uh, searching. It does. That's the other fact. But it. it is a hassle when you do it because you got to change everything to SSL, right? Well, no, you can actually go into the back end and you just have to make from HTTP to HTTPS. Yes. But, but the problem is that if you have external um, pictures coming from other servers or any asset that's coming from an external server and that connection is not a secure HTTPS, it's going to flag up in your browser and you can get a warning message or the page itself won't show. Right, it's not secure. There are ways around that, but um, it can be hassle. How about YouTube? That's one of the big ones, and we put a lot of YouTube clips up. I think most of their stuff is, uh, I think their site is all HTTPS. You know, I, I think we probably need to go into this uh, security Asset, uh, secure lock layer system in more detail in another show. Yeah, sure. So um, I've gone into that, and I think that will become more and more powerful. Uh, um, and then um, I go in um, to some of the plugins. Number that four I, is the plugins for security, right? Yeah, and I use two. There's a number, but I utilize two. Now, I'm going to butcher their name, Shukuri, um, are very well known. S-U-C-U-R-I. Yeah, they're, but they're very well known in the WordPress community. They've been in security for quite a while now, I think over four or five years. Um, they're owned by two great guys, um, and they've built up a fantastic business and reputation in the WordPress community. And they provide they provide two free plugins, um, but I only utilize one, which is called Security in an Altered in Malware. And they do provide a service, a paid service. But this, auditing malware. Yeah. Security uh, and auditing malware. That's right. That's it. If you go into the um, WordPress um, org and look under the library of plugins and do it under there, it will come up. And um, this is a fully functioning free plugin. Unfortunately, um, most clients approach you when they've already been hacked and they've got a major problem. And you can utilize, um, and normally um, bad PHP code has been injected into a lot of the key files. And manually going through those files is not practical and not secure. And you utilize this to um, but flag up where the hacker has injected bad code, and then you can do something about it. Um, and it does work, and it has other functionality that I utilize as well. Um, I, I propose to do a screen, a video screenshot where I go through the two plugins that I'm going to talk about and show people how I set both up, because you can set both plugins that I'm going to talk about in a way that can drive you crazy um, and scare the pants out of you. Um, so. Um, I set this up and it does an audit and then they do a paid service where they're all they're keeping an eye on the website and for one domain they charge you nineteen ninety-nine a year and they keep an eye on things for you. But I just use it because I I'm basically the IT or the webmaster for my clients. So I use and I utilize this plugin and it does a great job. Our next security issue is it's another plugin. I utilize these two plugins together, and that's a plugin called iTheme Security. It was called um, WP Security, but the developer has now become a member of the iThemes team, and um, iThemes bought this plugin, plus they um, hired the developer to work with them full-time. And iThemes is a very well-known plug-in shop and theme shop. It's very highly respected. And this this means that this plugin has the full support of iThemes. They do a free version and a premier version. But I find the um the free version, if you utilize it with the previous plugin, provides more and enough um security options. Um, the actual screens the options screens are 
a bit intimidating um, and very long-winded, but it provides an enormous amount of functionality. And like I said, um, in I propose to do a screen, a video screencast where I will go through the options on of how to set up these two plugins, and I'll probably put that up in the next week. Okay, with, good, very good. Now, so I've covered four things in detail, and also uh, a few months ago, I did even more um, detailed, well, a slightly different focused blog post, and that was about you as a div- as a semi developer going in and type hardening that's the term that's utilized hardening your wordpress site and i've got a very detailed post which i also probably put on the wp tonics website and probably link it to this this material and this podcast so you uh, combined you will have a very detailed set of notes and information plus with the screencast i propose to do you should have a very good resource that covers all the key aspects of security. So going up for me, you got hosting. Just four things to remember. Great hosting. It'll give you your first line. You're, you have to have a good backup to recover if you do get attacked, which is very possible even with great hosting or things do go wrong. SSL certificate and a security plugin. Two. If you, two, security. two security plugins. So if you have all those things, you're going to have a, a pretty good system. You may get hacked, but you're going to recover and your business it's only going to be long, down as long as it takes you to get that website back up. You know what? You know, this, is a, this is a bit it's a bit cruel, really, but what you're really doing, it's a bit like protecting your house, isn't it? You, you know, you could make it so secure that it would take forever to get into your own house, and it would be such a pain. So you look for a balance of increasing the security of your house security without it becoming a nightmare to get into your own house. But what you're really doing is that, you know, if a burglar or a team of robbers are really, really determined to get into your house, they will. But what you're really trying is you're really trying to say to the burglar, go somewhere else, find somebody that is less secure than you and go and rob their house. Hey, let, um, let, let me mention one last thing, too. We didn't really talk in the four points, and this goes before WordPress, is have a good computer, good password protection, and good systems in your own house. And I mean, just your computer where you start. If you're going to log on to your site, just simple stuff in a public area. You now, I shouldn't be really doing some programming in a public area, maybe at Starbucks. That's not a good place to work. So no. if you're in a coffee shop, that's not a great place to uh, be working on secure uh, well, that's, that, well, that's one of the factors about the whole site being under a secure socket layer is that that communication between and that the right. backing, if it's all done under a secure socket layer, it will be secure. Yeah, that, that's true. That helps. But I'm just, for the average person out there who's getting started, you just want to watch where you're working on your site. You've got to be a little bit careful. Yeah, be careful. And, and you know, I'm, I'm big into the Mac. Have, I believe the Mac provides you a little bit more uh, security because it won't get viruses in itself. If someone's doing what they call it a key check where someone's watching your keys as you type. Well, you know, you shouldn't, you know, I, I do, you know, I'm breaking, you shouldn't run your Mac as administrative mode, but I do. <laughs> but, but the reason why I get away with it is that if something wants, you know, it will still ask when you're downloading a bit of software, it will ask you, do you want to install this? And if it's not from a secure source, somewhere you don't ever download software from the internet right. and just installed it. You know, my Mac is always going to ask for the password before it downloads yes. any software, which I like. Just your very... Yeah, yeah, so make, you that's know, why you can do administrative on... If you know what you're doing. Right. But um, if I was dealing with a, a, a very novice Mac user, I would not let them run that computer in a administrative Admin. mode. Yeah. So that's where you start. Well, that's that sort of should finish it up for the show today. Yeah, it's been quick and fast, but I think I've, there's going to be a lot of resources on the WP Tonic website. I think if I do the video screencast and link to the previous um, blog post and put it on the site, the um, you know our viewers, our listeners will have a fantastic resource that will cover a lot of the things they need to know about security. 
For show notes, Google Hangouts, and additional resources, go to wp-tonic.com. As you continue on your WordPress journey, have fun, do your best, adjust your plans and code as needed, but remember to never and never give up even when the code doesn't work. And never give up and never give up and never give up. Never give up.